Okay, this is video two on pages three and four of the Algebra One Semester One exam review. Number nine, which of the following tables represents the function y equals negative 4x squared? So in order to figure that out, you have to plug in the x and solve for y and see if it matches. So if x is negative 2, negative 2 squared means negative 2 times negative 2, which is 4. Is negative 4 times 4 equal to negative 16? Yes, it is. What about for 0? 0 squared is 0. Negative 4 times 0 is also 0, right? Is that 0? Oh, oh, that doesn't work. I didn't get 0 here. Does not work. So this does not represent the function, right? What about the other table here? If x is negative 2, I already saw that. I got negative 16. Great. 0. If x is 0, y should be 0 as well. Great. If I plug a 2 in for x, 2 squared is 4. 4 times negative 4 is negative 16. That's what I got. Awesome. If x is 4, 4 squared is 16. 16 times negative 4 should be negative 64. Is that what I got? Yes, that is what I got. So all of these work. So yes, this one is a function. Or this one is a this one represents the function. I'm sorry. These are all correct answers to this function equation here. Okay, number 10. Jax threw a ball off the roof of his treehouse. The height y in feet of the ball and the time x in seconds is shown in the table. Interpret the y-intercept of this function. Okay, so the height in feet is y and the time in seconds is x. So when we have our graph, here's our x-axis, this is time in seconds. And here's our y-axis, this is the height of the ball. Okay, so when time is zero, which means we're, when we're right here before any time has passed at all, what's the height of the ball in feet? And it says it's 11 feet up, right? This is 11 feet. Okay, it says he threw the ball off the roof of his treehouse. So before he even throws the ball, how high up is he starting? 11 feet. Don't you think that probably means that his treehouse, he's 11 feet up? That he's 11 feet up in the air when he's throwing the ball. So then he throws the ball, and after about 0.5 seconds, the ball goes up to 12 feet, right? Then after a second, it goes back down to 11. So let's say this is uh, 1, 2, 3. Let's just say. So here's a half, a half, a half. 0 0.5, 1, 1.52, 2.53. These are seconds. Okay, so here's our height. And so after half a second, it goes up to 12. So let's say this is 10 here. So this is 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, whatever. Okay, so after... Oh, this is 0 0.5. 0 0.5 seconds, it goes up to 12. Then after a second, it goes back down to 11. Then after a second and a half, it goes down to 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This little skinny guy. And then after 2 seconds, it goes down to 2. And then after 2 and a half seconds, it's on the ground, right? So it kind of goes up a little bit, and then it goes straight down. Right? That's what our graph looks like. All right, so it says interpret the y-intercept of this function. Again, the y-intercept is where he's throwing, where the ball starts at. Before any time has passed, where does the ball start? Does it start on the ground? Nope, he's standing on top of the treehouse, so he's about 11 feet up. All right, number 11. Kate received $15 from her Nana on her birthday. Kate used this money to open a bank account, smart Kate, and added money each week as shown in the table. Interpret the y-intercept of the graph of the function. So time, um, again, here's our little graph. Time is always on the x-axis. So this is in weeks on our x-axis. And the dollars is our bank balance, right? So after um, zero weeks, one week, two week, three week, four week, right? And the amount in the bank account, let's say um, it goes up to 60, 20, 40, 60. Let's say it's there, 20, 40, 60, and this is one, two, three, four. Okay, so after zero weeks, she has $15. So she's about here. 
Then after one week, she has $38, so almost to 40. After two weeks, she has $51, so she's about here. After three weeks, she has $65, right? So it keeps going up a little bit. Okay, so what does it mean? What's the y-intercept? Where does she start at? When time is zero, before any time has passed, where is she opening up her bank account at? $15. So interpret the y-intercept means before any time has passed, where are we crossing the y-axis? At $15. So before, when she opens her bank account, day one, it's got $15 in it. Okay, number 12. Find the average rate of change. That's our slope for x equals 0.5 to x equals 3.5 for the following temperatures and degrees Fahrenheit recorded beginning at noon. Also interpret the meaning of x equals 3.5. All right, so here's our time, x equals 0.5 to 3.5. Find the average rate of change. So this is x, this is y. x is always the time. This is how much time has passed, right? Um... Interpret the meaning of x equals 3.5. This is beginning at noon. So I would guess this is half an hour afternoon. So 12.30. So this is 12 p.m. I would guess this is 12.30 p.m. This would be 1 p.m., 1.30 p.m., 2 p.m., 2.30 p.m., 3 p.m. That would be my guess, 3.30 p.m., right? So from noon until mid-afternoon, right? This is what we're talking about. It doesn't really tell us what X is here. It just measures it in half unit increments, and it starts at noon, so I assume it's with the time. Okay, so um, every half unit, how much is our temperature going up? So I want to find, I'm just going to pick two unit pairs and do the slope. So I'm going to use 0, 0,45 and I'm going to use 1, 1,50. 1 1.0,50. So I'm going to find the slope between those two, right? Y minus Y. I'm going to do 50 minus 45. And since I started with 50 on top, I have to start with its partner on the bottom, 1 minus 0. So that's 5 over 1, which is 5 degrees, right? Or a, a slope of 5. Rise over run. 5 degrees for every 1 unit of change. 5 degrees for 1 unit of change, right? So 45, 1 unit later goes to 50. 1 unit later it goes to 58. Uh-oh. So it's not going up the same. Find the average rate of change for x.5 to x to 3.5. So they're asking us to find this to this. Not just any random. Sorry, I didn't read the directions. All right, so we want to use 0 0.5 comma 47 to 3.5 comma 62. Y minus Y, 62 minus 47 over 3.5 minus 0 0.5. 62 minus 42 would be 20, minus 7 more would be 15, and 3.5 minus 0.5 is 3. That's an average rate, same thing actually, same average rate of change is a 5, 5 over 1. Okay, so from 0.5 to 3.5, it goes up about 5 degrees per unit, right? Okay, if I started at 0 and I was at 45, then I go up five degrees, then at two, I should be at about 60, what, 55, and then two, three, I should be at 60, which I am. So it does kind of go up on average about that, give or take a little bit, right? We're not quite at 60 here or 55 here. We're a little warmer, but then we level out here. It's asking for the average rate of change. So even though it's changing at different rates, kind of overall going from here to here if this if we couldn't see any of this information if we only had this piece and this piece the average rate of change is about five temp to five degrees per unit of change right and then it says um in degrees fahrenheit recording it beginning at noon also interpret the meaning of x equals 3.5 well if it begins at noon and time is zero to me zero is noon right this is what we kind of wrote in at the beginning so 0.5 would be like half an hour later, so 12.30. One unit would be an hour afternoon, 1.5, right? So that's what I'm kind of measuring. So I count this as about 3.30 p.m. 
So 3.5 equals 3.30 p.m. When it says interpret that, that's what I think it means. All right, next page. Number 13. Oops, I'm getting hung up here. All right, find x and y intercepts for each of the following. It's not multiple choice. Um, x and y intercepts is you just plug zero in for one and solve for the other. So if I plug a zero in for x, I can solve for y. So this goes away. Negative 2y equals 6. Divide both sides by negative 2. So y equals negative 3. So my y-intercept would be 0, comma, negative 3. And then my x-intercept would be 3x minus 2 times 0 equals 6. So the y part goes away. 3x equals 6. Divide both sides by 3. x equals 2. So my x-intercept would be 2, comma, 0. When y is 0, x is 2. When x is 0, y is negative 3. Okay, so to find one letter intercept, plug a zero in for the other letter, the other variable. So here to find x, I'm not going to plug a zero in for x. To figure out what x is, the x-intercept, I'm going to plug a zero in for y. So negative 2x plus 5 times 0 equals 7. So that gets rid of this whole term right here that had y in it. So now I got negative 2x equals 7. Divide both sides by negative 2. So x equals negative 7 halves or negative 3 and a half. So my x-intercept is negative 3 and a half comma 0. When y is 0, x is this. And then if I wanted to find the y-intercept, I plug a 0 in for x. Negative 2 times 0 plus 5y equals 7. This whole term goes away. So I get 5y equals 7. Divide both sides by 5 y equals 7 over 5 or 1 and 2 fifths. So my y-intercept would be when x is 0, y is two, uh, 1 and 2 fifths. Kind of sort of makes sense. To find an intercept, um, just plug a 0 in for the other variable. Number 14, find the x and the y-intercepts for the following linear graph. So it crosses the y-axis right here. It looks like up 2. So the y-intercept is at 0, comma, 2, or you could just say y equals 2. And the x-intercept, it crosses the x-axis right here. That's when x equals 3, or to get to this point, you'd have to go over 3, up 0. Right? So whatever x is, the other variable is 0 when you're talking about intercepts. Here, when y is 2, x is 0. When y is 3, or sorry, when x is 3, y is 0. Okay, number 15. Given the function, excuse me, given the function f of x equals negative 2x plus 3, and g of x shown in the table, compare the slopes and intercepts. So of f of x, let's first compare a slope, and then we can do the x-intercept and then the y-intercept. Okay, so for f of x, the slope is negative 2. The y-intercept is this number hanging off the end here, 3. And the x-intercept, remember this equation is really y equals negative 2x plus 3. So the x-intercept is when I plug a 0 in for y and solve for x. So I would subtract 3 from both sides and divide by 2, so I would get positive 3 halves. Right, if I did this off to the side, y equals negative 2x plus 3, and I plug a 0 in for y, 0 equals negative 2x plus 3, subtract 3 from both sides, and then divide by negative 2. So negative 3 divided by negative 2 is just positive 3 over 2, and these 2s cancel, so x equals positive 3 over 2. Okay, so that's for f of x. Now we want to compare g of x, right? So what's the slope of g of x? Let's find that last. What's the x-intercept? So when y is 0, what is x? Well, let, this is our y column. Remember, the function notation is always y. So where is it? 0. Okay, so my, my x-intercept uh, is 0. So it's going to be the same. When x is 0, y is 0. When y is 0, x is 0. So those are my intercepts, the origin. And then the slope rise over run 
from here to here, I went down two, and from here to here, I went up one. So my slope is negative two over one, right? Y minus Y over X minus X. Four minus two over negative two minus negative one. Two over negative one, which is negative two. Okay, so it says, given that, uh, compare slopes and the intercepts. Well, the slopes are the same. So lines are parallel, right? Slopes are exactly the same. The intercepts have nothing to do with each other, right? For f of x, the x-intercept okay, is well, about... sorry, it's getting late. My phone died. Um, anyways, the slopes, they're exactly the same, so the lines are parallel. Their intercepts are totally different, right? So that's all we had to do. Number 16, find the slope of each linear function shown, not multiple choice. So when they're in slope-intercept form, that's easy to do. Y equals mx plus b. The slope is the number in front of x. So here it's negative 5 for a, negative 5 over 1. That means on a graph, we would put a point, our first point on the graph, and then we would go down 5 over 1. So our line's going to slant down, right? We would start off on the y-axis at positive 1, and then we'd go down 5 over 1. For b, the number in front of x is our y-intercept. So we would rewrite this as y equals negative 3x plus 2, because it's a positive 2, so plus 2. And the number in front of x is our slope, negative 3. So we go down 3 over 1. For this guy right here, slope, this is where we have to use the slope formula, y minus y over x minus x. So I'm just going to pick this ordered pair and this ordered pair. You can pick any two. y minus y, 25 minus 19 over x minus x, 2 minus 4, 25 minus 19 is 6, 2 minus 4 is negative 2, so my slope is going to be negative 3, just like b, same slope. Negative 3 means negative 3 over 1, so down 3 over 1. For d, uh, oh, I see, I was like, I don't know where this goes, it goes up here. For d, same thing, um, we're going to use just any two points, I always pick the first two, y minus y, 5 minus 2 is 3, over x minus x, 0 minus 1 is negative 1. So my slope is negative 3. Um, and then for the last one here, this x should really go up above here, so we can kind of write it, I guess. 4, 5, 8, uh, 4, 6, 8, 10, 4, 6, 8, 10. This is what it should look like. So for our ordered pairs, I'm going to pick the first two and find the slope. y minus y, 0 minus 1 over x minus x, 4 minus 6, negative 1 over negative 2, which is positive 1 half. My slope is 1 half. So your slope formula is y minus y over x minus x. Um, if you're just looking at an equation, put it in slope-intercept form, and the slope is the number in front of x. Okay, number 17, write a function that represents a baby's weight during the first four months as shown in the table, where x is the number of months after the baby is born, and f of x is the weight of the baby in pounds. Remember, f of x is really just y. Just think of it as y. Okay, so time is always x, always. It's always the independent variable. Time doesn't change depending on anything. It goes on the same steady rate. So depending on the time, the baby's weight changes, right? So um, what did it say? It was weighted at months. X is the number of months after the baby is born. When the baby is one month old, it weighs about 11 pounds, right? When the baby's two months old, it should weigh about 16 pounds. When the baby's three months old, it weighs about 21 pounds. That is a humongous three pound baby, by the way. Uh, when the baby's four months, it weighs 26 pounds. My daughter's tiny, she's a peanut, but she's 11 months now, and she's probably maybe not even 20 pounds. <laughs> so three months, that's, that's a healthy baby right there. All right, so what was the question, right? A function that represents. So we want to think of this as y equals mx plus b, right? Our y-intercept is whatever y is when x is zero, right? Well, our y-intercept here is going to be whatever the baby weighs, when it's born, right? Does it tell us what it is at birth? Right, a function that represents the baby's weight during the first four months during the table where X is the number of months the baby's born, F of X is the weight of baby pounds. Uh, no, 
It doesn't tell us zero, but we can figure it out mathematically. That's no problem. So first thing I want to do is find the slope. So I'm going to use these first two ordered pairs. y minus y, 11 minus 16 over x minus x, 1 minus 2. That's negative 5 over negative 1, which is 5. My slope is 5. So I'm going to have y equals 5x plus b. i got to figure out what b is, the baby's weight at birth. So I'm just going to pick one of these ordered pairs, x and y, plug it in for x and y, and solve for b, right? So I'm going to pick 1 and 11. When x is 1, y is 11. So 11 equals 5 times 1 plus b. So this is 11 equals 5 plus b, minus 5, minus 5, 11 equals... No, well, not 11. 11 minus 5 is not 11. 6 equals b, right? So my function, my equation is going to be y equals 5x plus b, which is about 5 pounds per month, plus the baby was born at, this is 6, not b, plus the baby was born uh, at around 6 pounds on average, 7, 6, 7 pounds, right? So here's our equation. We have to write in function notation. So f of x equals 5x plus 6. The only difference in function versus equation is the way we write it. An equation with two variables is a function. When one variable depends on the other, that's a function. To write it in function notation is to take the dependent variable and write it with f of x like this. Whatever this is depends on what this is. The baby's weight depends on how many months old the baby is, right? This is our dependent variable, depends on x, so we write it as f of x. But these are the same thing, okay? Hopefully that makes sense.